Hello, future graduates of Menopause University. <laughs> Can you believe how much you've learned? Think back on what you knew or thought you knew before getting this education. Does it shock you to realize just how uninformed you were? Well, the whole purpose of this education is to learn how to manage the menopausal portion of your life. And that menopausal portion of your life will consume the rest of your life. So this education is really a focus on the future, your future, and you never know what the future will bring. This is video number 351, and it's one step further in the unit on cervical cancer. And since you've learned about everything that transpires from cause to treatment of cervical cancer and precancer, now it's time to learn about prognosis, in other words, the future after having cervical cancer. You definitely need to watch this video. Even if you don't have your cervix, and even if you've never really thought much about cervical cancer, I assure you that this video will plant some food for thought about more than just cervical cancer. Besides, you will not find this in my book in either edition. To learn about the prognosis after having cervical cancer, you will have to watch this video. So, what do you know about the prognosis of cervical cancer and precancer? Or more accurately, what do you think you know? How much have you heard about it? For starters, let's make sure you know what is meant by the word prognosis. Prognosis is a term that refers to the outcome of the cancer. It includes the statistics on the likelihood of recovery, recurrence, and survival. So, if you had to designate the prognosis for cervical cancer and precancer, what would you cite for the survival rates at each stage? And how would the survival of cervical cancer compare, say, to that of endometrial uterine cancer or breast cancer? How would you answer this quiz question? Which of the following statements is true regarding survival rates for cervical cancer and precancer? A. Cervical precancer survival rates are 100%. B. Cervical precancer survival rates vary greatly depending on degree of dysplasia. C. Cervical precancer survival rates are surprisingly low. D. Cervical precancer survival rates are 100% and the survival rates for each stage of cervical cancer are still very high. E. Cervical precancer survival rates are 100% and the survival rates for stage 1 are on the order of 90%. F. Cervical precancer survival rates are 100% and the survival rates for stages 1 and 2 are on the order of 80% or higher. G. Cervical precancer survival rates are 100% and the survival rates for stages 1, 2, and 3 are on the order of 75% or higher. H. Cervical precancer survival rates are 100%, but the survival rates for any stage beyond stage 1 are dismal. I. Survival rates for cervical cancer are similar to those for endometrial uterine cancer, stage by stage. J, survival rates for cervical cancer are much better than survival rates for breast cancer, stage by stage. K, survival rates for cervical cancer are excellent at all stages. L, A, E, and H above. M, B, F, and I above. N, C, G, and J above. O, none of the above. Was that a bit confusing? 
actually, there are three different aspects to this question. The first is the survival rate of cervical precancer, the dysplasias. The second is the survival rates for each of the four stages of cervical cancer. And the third is the survival rates of other cancers compared to cervical cancer. And if you know those three things, then you know the answer to the quiz question. So let's address each of the three separately, and then after that, I'll give you the answer. The first is the survival rate of cervical precancers. Cervical precancers are the dysplasias. And you know that there are three degrees of dysplasia. Mild dysplasia, moderate dysplasia, and severe dysplasia. In the last video on treatment for cervical cancer and precancer, you discovered that the treatment for all three degrees of dysplasia is the same. They all involve freezing the transformation zone with cryotherapy, or burning the transformation zone with laser, or excising the transformation zone with a conization or a leak device. You also learned that once you have treated the dysplasia in one of those ways, you've cured it. It's gone. So there is no further progression of the dysplasia. The future is bright. Most women forget about the fact that they even had cervical dysplasia. It never affects them again. And it has no bearing on their menopause or its management options. We call such a future outlook a 100% survival rate. Dysplasia in and of itself does not kill. So the survival rate with all dysplasias is 100%. So, Looking at our quiz question, let's highlight true statements about this in green and false statements in red. Green is for go, red is for stop. And we'll make the ones addressing dysplasia that are of interest to us right now bold. So here I've denoted in green the six times I offered the option starting, stating that cervical precancer survival rates are 100%. That's true. And I've denoted in red the two statements about cervical precancer that are false. B says cervical precancer rates vary greatly depending on degree of dysplasia, and C says cervical precancer rates are surprisingly low. Those are false. The second part of the quiz question pertains to the survival rates for the four stages of cervical cancer. Last week in our tutorial on treatment for cervical cancer, you saw that the treatments for all stages of cervical cancer are drastic. Remember this chart? Look at the orange cells. For even the mildest cases of cervical cancer stage one, the treatment is radical hysterectomy. And after that, you have to resort to radiation therapy and chemotherapy. I told you, that any time surgery is no longer an option, things are pretty bad. So this means that all stages of cervical cancer beyond stage one are pretty bad. And when cancer is pretty bad, their survival rates are low. In other words, the survival rates for cervical cancer stages two, three, and four are low. Take a look at that chart again. This time I've added the five year survival rates for each stage. So once again, you see that the five year survival rate for all the precancerous dysplasias is 100%. The five year survival rate for cervical cancer stage one is 90%, which is high. But look what happens after that. The five-year survival for cervical cancer stage two is already down to only 60%. And for stage three, it's as low as 33%. If you get to stage four, it's only 15%. 
So let's take another look at the quiz question and focus on the options that address the stages of cervical cancer. And if we highlight the true parts in green and the fall parts in red and then make the font bold on cervical cancer staging, here's what we get. So now I've highlighted the second part of options D, E, F, G, H, and K. E and H are true. E says the survival rates for stage 1 are on the order of 90%. That's true. And H says the survival rates for any stage beyond stage 1 are dismal. That's true. But D, F, G, and K are false. D says the survival rates for each stage of cancer are still very high. F says the survival rates for stages 1 and 2 are on the order of 80% or higher. That's false. G says the survival rates for stages 1, 2, and 3 are on the order of 75% or higher. That's false. K says survival rates for cervical cancer are excellent at all stages. That's false. So now you see that options D, F, and G are false because they indicate that the survival rates for stages beyond stage 1 are still high. And they are not. But option E is true because it states that the survival rate for stage 1 is on the order of 90%, and it is. And option H is true because it states that the survival rates for all stages beyond stage 1 are dismal, and they are. Option K stating that survival is excellent at all stages is just way off in every way. The third part of the quiz question pertains to the survival rates of other cancers in comparison with those of cervical cancer. Specifically, I cited endometrial uterine cancer and breast cancer. The unit that preceded this one was on endometrial uterine cancer. And in video number 330, I taught you all about the prognosis of that cancer. I created a detailed chart with all the information on endometrial uterine cancer similar to the one I've created here for cervical cancer. Here's that chart again. But I'm going to simplify this. Let's create a chart with nothing but five-year survival rates for these two cancers. That way we can compare them without all the distraction of the other information. So you see that the decline in five-year survival is much greater with each stage of cervical cancer than it is for endometrial uterine cancer. Clearly, cervical cancer is the worst of the two. And the other disease in question was breast cancer. Now I know you hear a lot about breast cancer, and I know we haven't gotten to our unit on it yet. It's the next big unit. I also know that there's a lot of fear of breast cancer. But how much do you know about the five-year survival rates for it? Do you assume that people talk so much about it because the survival rates are high or because they're low? How would you expect the five-year survival rates for breast cancer to compare to those of cervical and endometrial uterine cancers? Why don't we add breast cancer to our chart to assess this? Here you see that the five-year survival rate for stage one of breast cancer is 100%. For stage 2, it's a whopping 93%. For stage 3, it's still 72%. And it isn't until you get to stage 4 that it drops precipitously to 22%. Are you shocked? Did you have any idea that of these three cancers, survival rates for breast cancer are the highest? at every single stage. If we rearrange the order of the columns to reflect this, you see it more clearly. All I've done here is swap the columns for endometrial and cervical cancers. So now cervical cancer is in the first column with the worst five-year survival rates. Endometrial uterine cancer is in the second column with intermediate five-year survival rates. And breast cancer is in the third column with the best 
five year survival rates. But you see that stage for stage, breast cancer has the best prognosis and five year survival. This surprises most women. So let's look at our quiz question again with the red and green bolded highlights for the options pertaining to these other two cancers. So option I is false because the survival rates for cervical cancer are not similar to those for endometrial uterine cancer stage by stage. And option J is false because the survival rates for cervical cancer are not better than those for breast cancer at any stage. This means that the only options that were true were options A, E, and H. They're the ones that are all green and in bold now. So in the multiple options listed at the bottom, option L is for A, E, and H above. So that's the correct answer. The ironic thing here is that of all these cancers, endometrial uterine cancer, breast cancer, and cervical cancer, cervical cancer is by far the worst, yet it has been the greatest success story. And there's just one reason why it's such a success story. We know the cause and can detect it before the disease ever becomes actual cancer. That's the power of cause. We know the cause of endometrial uterine cancer too, but for it, we wait for symptoms to get our attention. Whereas for cervical cancer, we have not only one, but two great screening tests that enables us to screen all women. It is the knowing of cause and the screening of all women for that cause that makes the future bright on cervical cancer. Without these things, the prognosis would be extremely grim, as it once was. In summary, the prognosis of cervical cancer is still grim, but because we know that it's caused by HPV, and because we have two great screening tests that enable treatment in the pre-cancer space, we hardly ever see the actual cancer. And for cervical cancer, it gets even better than that. In addition to knowing the cause, we now have a vaccine to prevent it altogether. So that will be our topic for the next video. I sure hope you like all these lessons that are going to make your future bright. I guess you could say you have a very good prognosis. You'll have the very best prognosis if you schedule a consultation at menopausetailor.me so that I can tailor everything specifically to you. And you'll have a good prognosis if you sign up for my newsletter and subscribe to this channel. Your prognosis for following me on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram is less certain, but it can't hurt. <laughs> if you want the chart designating the five-year survival rates for cervical cancer or the chart comparing the five-year survival rates for cervical, endometrial, uterine, and breast cancers, you can find them via the link in the description box or at menopausetailor.me. So I will see you in a week. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>